All right, I'm back. This is Word of Truth with J.D. Nija. <sighs> so, um, the passion for the word, you got to be hot. And believe me, I'm hot right now. I'm <clears throat> bopping on GMS like I was trained to do. And... Um, I guess at some point I have to just, um, I don't know, maybe that's how you sharpen your sword is by, um, listening to men who are preaching a gospel, but you have to, like the Bible says, check the spirit and, um, one of the apostles from Great Millstone, Apostle Rakar, he's the loudmouth of the group. Um, he was saying how a man dropped out of GMS. He resigned. He gave up. He he couldn't do it anymore. He said, he said, forget it. And he laughed. And, and you know, how we do, <clears throat> we play both sides. First, it's well, I don't care about, he's the one that's losing, we don't care about him, blah, blah, blah. But he went on and on and on. He started making fun of the man and um, saying how he he's, he's just doesn't get it, he's falling off. And, you know, I was listening to it, and he's, he's double-minded. He says, we love the man, we don't have nothing against him, but then he's, Saying that, you know, the guy's going to fail, he's going to go to hell, he's going to go to the pit, or whatever they say. You know what I'm talking about. Um, he neither has love nor hate. You know, he can't figure out what he wants. It's like, and what that made me think of when he was saying these things about this man is that um, there's a spirit that's coming on probably some of these men, and they're going, Man, um, some of these comments, you know, maybe the comments I left, they they looked into and they said, or vocab Malone, anyone that's coming against them in some way. And we know the law keepers, the, these other black Hebrew um, law keeper type groups like Rap the News and these freaks of nature. We know that they're way wrong. They're even more wrong than GMS. They're like... They're on some, they're on some really bad drugs, <clears throat> but um, um, what I'm thinking is GMS is going to finally fail. The spirit is only going to stay with them so long. So, the other interesting part of this book of Acts, I'm still, this is the second part of um, what am I going to call it? Uh, book of Acts. GMS is Achilles heel or some shit like that. Because if these guys read through the book of Acts, see, they don't, they don't hold on to the Holy Spirit. That's where they, that's where they're lost. They're trying to, they're trying to get up the ladder on their own way. They're setting up a ladder and they're all trying to climb up. And, um, the, the doctrine that they're pushing is just, I don't see how they can stay in their, in their spot. There's so much in the scripture that um, proves them to be wrong if you just read it, how it's supposed to be read, and have a little bit of sense. So um, I guess I just have a hard time. Um, I mean, even the Christian doctrine with all its, we can save the world if we just believe in each other and we all believe the same we can change this world around that makes more sense than their their stupid shit and that and i mean that's stupid there is no there is no king besides yahushai so the nonsense that they push even in the christian church that's there's they go too far the other way oh with the spirit of god we can do anything um you got to, we got to come under his leadership first. That's what they, they don't understand. So between the Christians and the Jews, 
um, and these different doctrines, these Catholic doctrines, these <sighs> these the church is the king doctrines. That that's another weird Christian theology, and um, it might be more honest than any of them. It's like, no, listen to us. This is a messed up world. Listen to us, and follow us, and you'll be saved on mass. But the Bible doesn't say that. It doesn't say you'll be saved in mass. It says each man's going to walk his own walk to salvation. There's no, there's no <laughs> riding in on someone else's coattail. So that being said, um, <clears throat> the verse in here that, um, let me put this down. I hope you can hear me. I'm going to sit, scoot over here. Um, so I'm going through the act, book of Acts, right? I'm in 10, and then I go. It talks about Paul and Barnabas heading off for Antioch. Um, there's, there's really some... I, I used to think the book of Acts was... Um, silliness because it was actually about men walking with the Holy Spirit and that's the part I guess was hard for me to understand is that um, the Holy Spirit will work with the men and that's that's where GMS has it right yeah the prophets are going to be the ones saying it and the prophets are going to be the ones getting the messages and, um, and they're going to be responsible for relaying the messages and being obedient <clears throat> to the <clears throat> to what the Lord's asking them. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to go to the part I was going to read because um, if I start jumping around, I'm going to get lost again. And um, <clears throat> Um, yeah, but in um, 13.6, there's an interesting story. I'll just read it real quick and see if we can get, get it, what I'm trying to say. Um, and when he had gone through the Isle under Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus. So this false prophet was a Jew, right? A sorcerer, a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a fucking Jew, whose name was Bar-Jesus. So he was one of these Pharisees, these, these GMS pricks, um, which was the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Paul, Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elamus, the sorcerer, and so his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn them away, the deputy from the faith. So this so this GMS guy, this sorcerer, um, Elimus, Elimus, Bar Jesus, um, he didn't want the word to go forth, so he tried to get between them. And it says, um, then Saul, who also is called Paul, and this is the first time where Luke in Acts um, actually <clears throat> changes the name over to Paul. Filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes upon him. So he's giving him the evil eye. He's staring him. He's staring this devil down. And he says to him, Oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness. Will thou, will thou not cease to pervert the right way of the Lord? So when it says subtlety and mischief, that's the deceit and the fraud. He's a fraud. He's a fraud Jew, just like GMS. When are you going to stop it, you pricks? Um, when are you going to stop perverting the right way? Why are you making the straight pass crooked is what he's saying. Verse 11, And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind not seen the sun for a season. 
and immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what he had done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. So what did Paul do? He caused this this sorcerer to go blind so he wouldn't be able to go around um, talking shit. He pretty much shut him down. And the deputy went, wow, that was, that was a better show than I bargained for. You know, he wanted to hear the word of the Lord. He got to see it with his own eyes, the power of the Spirit. And that's what these demon GMS um, Negro Hebrew Israelite militant dickheads are going to get. They're going to get to see it with their own eyes, how screwed up they are. So that, that was part of the one I wanted to um, bring forward. There's so much that I just studied this morning that was just, wow. It just fired me up, man. It's, makes me, it's making me so mad at these guys. Um, so, um, then it goes into, this is the part that, that um, GMS is really screwed up on. So they, they call David the, their king, you know, and they're all about the seed of David and all that and blah, blah, blah. But um, Paul brings it back to reality in the same chapter 13. And I'll read through it. And there's a part where it, it talks about these prick GMS guys that what's going to happen to them. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice. I've been coming out of that cold. I'm a little rough, but hopefully that's not distracting you from what I'm saying about the Holy Spirit and the, the debauchery, the, the deception that these guys are bringing forth without any fear. They go, oh, fear the Lord. They have no fear. They have no understanding. Okay. Um, uh, so he's, Paul's talking about when Yahushai came back to life. And he was seeing many days of them which came up from him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people. So all the people that saw Yahushai resurrect, they're like, wow, he did come back from the dead. And we declare unto you glad tidings how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God has fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that he has raised up Yahushai again, as it is also written in the second Psalm, thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. <clears throat> and as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption. He said on the wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. <clears throat> um, he took all the sin upon himself, but the mercies that are bestowed on us as humans, spirits, the same mercy that he shows David, even though he sinned, he's going to forgive all the sin that was put on you. Hawashai, he's like... Yeah, you took all their sins, but I'm not going to hold you accountable for it because the same reason why David's not going to be held to his sin, you cleaned everyone up, and if I forgive you, I forgive all. So that's what he's saying. <sighs> GMS is just missing the point, man. Um, wherefore he has said in the second Psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. For David, after he had served, hold on. After he had served his own generation by the will of God, he fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. <clears throat> In other words, he went back to the spirit world and he had to come back. And he came back as Peter. And this is um, actually Peter talking about himself, which is amazing in itself. It's like, um, now here I am back again, seeing these, seeing these wicked, this wicked shit with my own eyes. So, I'm a witness. That's why he said he's a witness. I swear I just said he, it was a witness. <clears throat> Anyhow. Um, <laughs> and this is the good part. GMS, you dummies. Verse um, 38, Acts 13. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you, that though this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, right, 
and by him all that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Um, all believe, and by him all that believe are justified. All. Not some. Not just these. All. And then it says, you can't be justified by the law. In verse 40, and this is a part that GMS's head gets cracked open all the way to the white meat. Because <clears throat> he's talking directly about them. Um, beware. Verse 40 of Acts 13. Beware. Therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of the prophets. Behold you despisers and wonder and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which you shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Um, what Peter is saying is, you you corrupt Jews, you you pricks. There's going to come a time when you're going to think you know everything and you're going to claim to know everything, but you're just wicked and you're just awful and you're going to perish. How's he put it? Behold, you despisers and wonder and perish, for I work a work in, the, in your days, a work which you shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. I've been telling them, vocab has been telling them, and between the two of us, I'm not saying vocab's not a good scholar. I'm just saying um, <clears throat> he's a little co confrontational, and um, he has a little bit more power in the world, so he may not be the best person to listen to if you're a Jew. You don't want a Christian apologist to be telling you anything, but these guys... Maybe because I'm a, a Gentile-looking guy. I don't know what their problem is. I'm telling them over and over again, you guys are missing the mark. And that's what the Bible says right there. Even though a man will tell you, you won't believe. And no matter how many times I bring it to them with Scripture, and I make these videos, and they know who I am, and they've warned people about me, because they don't want people to hear the truth. They will not look at my videos and repent and say, this damn cracker, this Bible, what do I call myself? The Bible dick, this Bible dick um, has figured out our, our error in our dark doctrine and he's out here correcting us and we stand corrected. We're going to bring our people in, but we're going to bring our people in with love and with an open heart, and we're preaching forgiveness of sins through Yahushai, not some Judaic, Pharisaic, um, cockroach style. These guys are just cockroaches. They're rats. They're, they're wicked. And... Um, I don't know what to say anymore. I mean, I've tried to love them. I've tried to correct them. I've tried to reproach them. I've tried to rebuke them. Um, and uh, I guess the Lord has the plan for them set, and that's all there is to it. And I need to use what I can to get to the truth through them. But at the same time, I have to be careful, just like all of you do, not to be led astray by these false doctrines, by these guys that sound so sure of themselves, so smart, so well-read. It is a subtle, demonic snare that many are going to fall by the wayside because of these guys. And all I can do is continue to push out messages that um, bring the truth to light, uncover their their wickedness and the dirt they throw on the truth of the gospel. And I need to 
figure out a way to calm myself down when I find out about um, the, the evil they're working and I have to, I don't know, I, all I can do is just bring it out. I'm, I'm fired up against these guys now. I'm, I'm, I don't know how to calm myself. I'm just pissed. I mean, I, I, I can forgive the Christians because at least they're accepting of everyone and they're saying, we just want to make everyone love. That's, <laughs> at least that's understandable. These guys just want to make everyone hate, which is, uh, it's a bad place to be. Anyhow, um, this is J.D. Nige. I'm not going to go on too long about this book of Acts right now because um, the Spirit is really has me stirred up. And um, we'll look into these issues some more later. But if you want to study some interesting um, creation of the Christian church, we got to understand that it's not replacement theology. It is the theology. You know, people try and come up with this. Oh, the Christians are using replacement theology to take away the Jews' power. You know, they're, yeah, yeah. We'll go into it a little bit more. There's a lot to unpack in the book of Acts. And if you want to really test your um, Hebrew versus um, New Testament doctrines, your Old Testament versus your New Testament, you get into the book of Acts and you see that what Paul and Peter were doing, traveling all around and telling people they were preaching the gospel, the good word that you don't have to, you don't have to be a Jew to make it. You just have to be clean of heart and pure of spirit. And they didn't put a lot of laws on them and a lot of yoke. All they said was, stay away from the blood, love the Lord, love each other. Um, there was a, there was four main tenets. Um, don't fornicate with other gods. There was only four main tenets for a um, Gentile to obey. And it's pretty simple. It's basically just walk in the way of a, um, of a Bible believer and don't believe on any other gods and don't, um, uh, fornicate with the idolatry of the blood, you know, the sacrifices and things like that. And other than that, it's like love each other and love, love God and love his creation it's simple and man everyone really had it everyone's talking about everything except what is in the book so anyway jd nija i hope you enjoyed the message i hope you're getting something out of these messages because um i'm putting a lot of effort into getting down to the bottom of a lot of this stuff through the scriptures and we want to um we want to spread the word in truth and in, in honesty and sincerity and not lead anyone astray with silly doctrines and false imaginations. So, uh, Heavenly Father, thank you again for bringing the Holy Spirit on me, pumping me up with your word so that I can pump it out to the people. Uh, listeners, you subscribers and other listeners, thanks for being here. I know I know Bible study is not always easy and the deeper you get into it the um, the breaking down of old belief systems and the realization of the true spirit of um, Jesus Christ or Yahweh Shai Hamashiach is antithema to this world and it's hard to um, Get on the right path because the path is so distorted by um, the ways of this world but we'll talk more about these things again tomorrow this is your brother jd niger word of truth i'm out